Hi, Paul Thompson here. You'll be aware by now that I like doing unspeakable things to the orchestra. And in this video, I'm going to see what happens if we pitch the orchestra down one or even two octaves. You can get some amazing effects. So let's dive straight in. OK, so it sounds pretty meaty. That's our symphonic strings. Um, with the spiccato up. Now I've got three different options here. So the first one you'll probably come across in Logic is the pitch shifter, and this lives inside the uh, the normal kind of pitch uh, folder. Um, you don't have to dig and search for this. Now it has an interesting sound. Let's put it uh, all the way on and let's pitch it down by an octave. Now there's a couple of different options in here. I've got it set on manual. Um, but actually what you could do is you could try out the different settings. The drums one has a little bit more low end meat, um, but actually you can then experiment with some of these. And, and you can get some really weird effects. You can almost get kind of like, uh, I don't know if any of you had the um, old Akai hardware samplers. But there was an effect that we used to love making where we time stretched things out to ridiculous levels and you got that kind of um, junglist kind of kind of in the sound. You can do all that kind of stuff in here. I mean, if you just go completely mad. I mean, it doesn't sound great, but if you took that and then, well, let's do that. If you take that and then you put it through uh, some kind of crazy, let's put a delay on it. Um, bit of cross feed, nice and long. And then let's put a massive reverb on that. Pretty fruity, I'd say. OK, let's get rid of all this nonsense and go back to what we're actually supposed to be looking at. Um, so, so some interesting effects can be had with the pitch shifter. But if you are um, interested enough to search down here in audio units and then Apple, you'll find a whole load of AU plugins and there are two that deal with pitch. Now I'm going to look at the uh, AU new pitch first. That is the more recent one. Um, let me just play it first of all. It's kind of interesting and you'll probably, um, when you load it up, you'll probably find that there's some a little bit of weirdness here. Now, it's a, I kind of prefer it with peak locking off, but you know you can kind of it depends on the effect that you're really after. But this is not bad. Um, if we put it all the way down to two octaves, it almost kind of disappears into nothingness. And if we play up high, that's kind of an interesting sound. Um, but that's really not my favourite one. My favourite one is the old AU pitch. Um, again, you've got two controls here that you can fiddle around with. Oh, that has got some real amazing low end in. If we just, I, I'll show you the extremes of the smoothness. So with the smoothness at 100%, we're starting to get that interesting flutter down the bottom but I'd leave it probably halfway. And then tightness. Interesting. And again, we can take that all the way down. And we start to lose it a little bit. But it's making some interesting noises up here. If I just uh, put that back to an octave, which, which as we all know is 1200 cents. There's something about that that almost sounds like a kind of Jean-Michel Jarre thing. Um, and I can imagine having, uh, putting our, our delays and things back on. Let's just, um, let's get that into more of a kind of rhythmic thing. Uh, the reverb is a tiny bit long. Let's just turn that down to something more sensible. It's interesting. Um, 
it does give you a huge amount of character doing this, but you can also blend it in with your original signal. Let's take the delay and reverb off again so you can hear more clearly what I'm doing. Um, and if we take that again down the bottom end, So you can see there even not quite as successful um, when you take it all the way down there, two octaves, but I do like blending it in and it just gives you something kind of different. Kind of interesting. So that's the strings. Now I'm going to uh, be very naughty and immediately go to the contrabassoon. Let's put a couple of extra mics up. So our contrabassoon. It sounds pregnant with opportunity. Let's, uh, let's switch on the pitch shifter. Okay, we've got that really interesting kind of fluttering sound, so let's identify where that's coming from. Okay, that's with the tightness all the way up, so I'm going to try round about here. Okay, that's the sound I like. And just out of interest, what's it sound like? Two octaves down. Kind of interesting. Um, I wonder what the long notes would sound like. Let's go back, just dial that back a little bit and go back to 1200. Interesting. Now, we've got a slightly more sawtoothy sound here, and I think that what is happening is we don't get the same amount of bass resonance from that kind of waveform, um, with the double read, obviously. So why don't we try something a little bit different? Let us try the contrabass clarinet. Um, now let's turn that off and have a quick listen. Let's take a bit of the vibrato off. Okay, now I think that that is going to give us some meat. Okay, that's sounding pretty cool. What about the bass flute? Let's check out the bass flute. I do actually quite like the effect that you get from um, from moving all the controls as well while you're actually playing. But let's concentrate on what we're supposed to be doing. 2400. Okay, now there's something that um, I want to try as well here, um, which is 
to pitch shift down in contact as well. So if we tune down from the contact interface here, and then we look at what happens with our AU pitch. So let's just hear this just tune down on its own. This is great. So I'm going to put um I'm going to put our cinematic rooms on there as well. And just dial that up a bit. Let's make a decent mix. Wow, some great sounds here. Let's just play around with the dynamics. Okay, I'm going to try one more thing, which is to go for, oh, actually, before we leave this, before we leave this, uh, let's just play this one thing. Pretty cool, I think you'll agree. Okay, right, we have to try the brass because, of course, uh, why not? So just for pure extravagance, I'm going to use the six horn patch. Um, let's see what happens. Let's tweak our controls a little. Interesting. Yeah, the tightness is still giving us the flutter, but actually the smoothness control is reacting in a slightly different way to before. And that's, I guess, because of the um, complexity in this waveform. Okay, let's do the same trick as before, where we take contact down, first of all. And then... Interesting. <laughs> Where have we heard something that sounds a little bit like that before? Um, just out of interest, let's try the... That is very cool. I mean, we've got, without even um, doing any of this stuff, We've got that fabulous, because we've pitched it down, we're getting the the uh, room, the reverberation in the room is double in length, um, really giving us some amazing kind of, uh, amazing kind of ambience there. But also if we put on our stereo delay and very long reverb, let's just push, push it up a little bit, tweak it here. And just um, to be pointlessly extravagant about it. Now, 
Now, of course, I want to hear what that sounds like with the uh, most aggressively raucous sound in the entire brass section, which is the chimbasso. Okay, so it's pretty fruity already. Let's tweak our controls again. Oh, it's almost like distortion. Fabulous stuff. Right, let's blend it in. And just out of interest, double octave. That's a sound that's begging for some reverberation. Nice and long. I'm almost frightened to press the key. Okay, we're really upsetting the reverb there. It's um, it's not very happy with, with that massively aggressive sound coming through. Um, let's just let's just go back to the octave, and I'm going to do the little tuny trick here again, um, and we're going to put that down an octave there. Let's just turn the reverb off. Okay, let's go back to our quivre. Wow. Okay, let's go back to this. Pull that down a little bit. That's a great sound. This is the kind of madness that um, I would really encourage you to. It's the thing that you just don't think about when you sit down to write a piece of orchestral music and uh, you've got your orchestra samples up and you're happily tinkering away. You just don't tend to think about doing this kind of stuff. But putting some of this this kind of madness in there um, really does make whatever you're writing stand out it's like if you hear a sound that you can feel is kind of organic but you just but it sounds like the craziest synth you've ever heard um the, you're just into a whole new territory so um i think we're uh, <laughs> i think we've exhausted the possibilities of this so my recommendation would be the au pitch the original au pitch is the one that i love it's in that um little apple sub menu within the plugins um, you can do this on other doors, have similar kind of pitch shifting things. And I'm not saying that you need any, you know, there are loads and loads of pitch shifting plugins, but you just, you don't really need to go and spend money on, you know, specialist pitch shifting plugins. The reason that they are more expensive is because they're designed to put an entire mix through and to get it out the other end sounding like a real thing, but maybe up or down a, you know, semitone. We're not, this is not what this is about. What this is about is trying to make it sound as as different as possible and as new as possible. Um, so lots and lots of fun to be had doing this. Um, <laughs> let me know if you come up with anything cool. Put it in the comments below so that we can all have a go. And um, uh, you know, any particular instruments. It'd be interesting to see what the trumpet sounds like. Um, you know, maybe even playing a melody. Well, look. Now that I've said it, oh, hang on. Okay, here goes. Ooh, I'm so glad I loaded this up. Wow, that's like a kind of weird hybrid between the trumpet and the horn.
Very interesting. Let's go for a really weird sound. Let's try and max out the... Okay, that's interesting. Let's pop the delay and reverb on that sound first. And then back to our nice horn sound. Wow, I love this sound. This is crazy good. Okay, just for completeness, double octave. And then tuning that down. So let me work this out. I've tuned the trumpet down an octave and I'm pitching down an octave. So this will be two octaves down as well. Nice. And let's do the blend on that. And then just for the sake of completeness, three octaves down. That's pretty cool. I'm so glad I loaded this up. That's my new favorite sound. Um, so add stuff in the comments below. If you find something that works really, really well, stick it in there. So we've all got lots and lots of different ideas to all try. Um, I know that I'm kind of overcooking it probably with the uh, with the delay and, and the reverb, but I mean, it's, it's all about getting a, a kind of amazing characterful sound. And what I hadn't really thought about until I've actually just heard it here is that when you pitch it, when you pitch this stuff down like this, um, and you're using a legato transition instrument, you're getting those um, changes. I suppose actually this is this really is most effective when you pitch down from the actual plugin, from the instrument plugin. You're slowing down the movement between the two notes as well and getting any kind of interesting artifacts from that. So uh, that really adds to the kind of uh, fatness of the thing and, and the kind of vibe. Um, so uh, there we go. A few experiments in repitching the orchestra. So I hope that that was interesting and there's some inspiration in there for you to take away. Look forward to seeing what you come up with as well in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and see you on the next one. Bye bye.